Hey church family, uh, Pastor Curtis here along with Carrie and Jason for Monday's edition of Crossroads Chronicles. I think we're in week like 200, I'm not for sure, uh, <laughs> but uh, today we want to talk about a subject that uh, is difficult to kind of wrap your mind around and that's the Trinity. You know, the Trinity is, you know, God in three person, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, I believe that 100% to be true. Sometimes I have my, I have a difficult time wrapping my mind around uh, just how big God is. And, you know, the Bible says his ways are not our ways. And there's some things about God we just can't wrap our mind around. And isn't it amazing that uh, a God that we can't even comprehend sometimes how big he is, uh, that and he loved us enough to send Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. So today I want to read a scripture that I've been closing my sermons with. Uh, the last uh, couple weeks since we've been doing online church. And it, it's a, it's a uh, scripture that talks about each member of the Trinity, uh, God in three persons. And it comes out of uh, 2 uh, Corinthians 13, uh, verse 13. Here's what it says. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh, this morning, Carrie's going to talk about the Holy Spirit. So, Carrie, what do you have? I think that when we start to teach about the Trinity or we talk to people, um, especially I know when I tr teach kids, one of the hardest things to understand about the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. I think that we can grasp to some degree who God is and what he is and why Jesus is a part of the Trinity, but I think some people struggle with um, the Holy Spirit, and I think that's because of the way the world describes what the Holy Spirit is to us. Um, and first of all, we need to understand that we don't have the Holy Spirit permanently until we're believers. Once we become a believer in Jesus Christ and we accept him as our Lord and Savior, um, that's when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell with us permanently. Um, and, you know, once that happens, then that's our guide. And that's what we need to use as our guide. The world describes that in so many ways. You know, we use the word conscience or um, our inner voice. There's so many different ways the world describes that. Even as far as, in, you know, in the cartoon Pinocchio, we have Jiminy Cricket. That's the, you know, the, the entity that tells Pinocchio when to act right and how to act. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. But the Holy Spirit is so much more. Um, in Isaiah, when um, it's talking about the, one of the prophecies of Jesus Christ, um, it tells us what the Holy Spirit is. And it says, it's Isaiah 11, 1 and 2, and it says, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. And that's talking about Jesus, that from the lineage of Jesse, that Jesus will be born. And then it goes on to say, The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. And it tells us then what the Spirit is. The Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And that's what the Holy Spirit should be for all of us. Um... The Holy Spirit does a lot of work in each one of us, and that all begins when the Holy Spirit leads us to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is that prompting that tells us that we need something more in our life. Um, and then, like I said early, earlier, the Holy Spirit stays with believers. Once we accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit stays with us permanently. And when you read in the book of John, um, towards the end, when Jesus is getting ready to leave his disciples, he talks about the Holy Spirit coming to stay with them as a guide and to help them through life. Um, and then one of the other things that the Holy Spirit does is it clarifies God's word for us. There are so many parts of the Bible that we can't understand without the prompting and knowledge that we gain through the Holy Spirit. And then lastly, the Holy Spirit inspires and enables supernatural acts in and through us. So there are a lot of things that as Christians that we do and that we are called to do that we would not be capable of just as simple human beings. Um, and a good picture of those things is when we look at the fruits of the Spirit. That's in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It says against these things there is no law. Um, 
we're not capable of those things without the Holy Spirit. We may be capable of some of those things in some ways to some people, but we're not capable of all of those things to all of God's people without the Holy Spirit in us and without that guidance from the Holy Spirit. So, you know, when you think about the Holy Spirit, look at those different things that the Holy Spirit um, provides for us, you know, that guidance, um, those supernatural acts, and remember that that comes from God. That's not something that you're capable of. We need to give that credit to God through the Holy Spirit. Okay, Carrie took up all of our time today, so that'd be it. No, uh, Jason's going to talk about another member of the Trinity, and that's God. What are you talking I'm going to try to go real fast, but uh, I've got a list of things that God is and things that God does. And I would encourage you to do a study on the attributes of God. It'll blow your mind. Um, this is just touching the surface, what I've got. But number one, um, God is infinite. In Colossians 1.17, it says, And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Another one is God does not change. Who he is never changes. His attributes are the same from before the beginning of time to I mean, eternity. Uh, he is omnipotent. We've heard those omni words, right? He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. Psalms 33.6, by the word of the Lord. Just by God's word, his, his, uh, his voice, the heavens were made. Their starry host by the breath of his mouth. God is om omniscient, which means he is all-knowing. God is omnipresent. He is always everywhere. Do you hear that? He is always everywhere. Try to, try to picture that. Curtis said it's hard to understand this sometimes. Um, and that's one of them that will just blow your mind if you just keep on thinking about it. Uh, some other awesome ones is God is wise. He is full of uh, He's full of perfect, unchanging wisdom. Uh, Romans eleven thirty three says, "Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments and unfathomable His ways." Some other things about God: God is just. Sometimes we don't like that. We don't like to talk about that, but it's true, and it's something we need to, to face and realize that God is just. He's in, infinitely, he's always right. Uh, he's perfect in everything he does. God is merciful. We talk about that a lot, right? We need his mercy. God is gracious. God is loving. God is holy. And my favorite one, the, the, the one that I try to think about all the time in my head, try to imagine in my head, is that God is glorious. Uh, he is infinitely beautiful and, and great. Um, and man, just look more into to the attributes of God. It's, it's an amazing thing to study that. Okay. And uh, this morning I want to talk real quickly about Jesus Christ. I could talk for days about him. Uh, you know, his death, burial, and resurrection, he came uh, to, to take the punishment for our sins. But, you know, the one thing that I just want to highlight is when Jesus came, he was fully God. He humbled himself to be fully man. And uh, just the people that Jesus cared for and, and hung out with, uh, he didn't hang out with the people that could do something for him. He didn't hang out with the rich people. You know, he just hung out with the average people, with the people who no one else cared for. And he was just an example of how we should go about caring for people. You know, this past Saturday, I had the, the privilege of, of serving meals to a lot of homeless people at the M28 ministry. And I was just thinking at one time, you know what, if Jesus uh, would come back to earth, uh, man, he would be right in the middle of people just like those people. Uh, and so that was that's just an example for me. That's probably the reason uh, I go and volunteer sometimes there because I know if I want to be more Christ-like, I need to be around the people that Christ would have been around. So, uh, you know, lots of things about Christ I could talk about. You know, one of the things that uh, sometimes I think when we think of the Trinity that, that God is the boss of Jesus and he's the boss of the Holy Spirit, but that's not how it works. They are in perfect harmony and perfect union. They're all the same. They're one that, that deals with humanity in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God set that all up, and he sent Jesus for you and me so we could spend eternity with him uh, in heaven someday. Man, can you imagine being in the presence of God Almighty 
his son Jesus Christ, where his spirit will, will just it, it'll just be who we are someday. And uh, man, I can't wait for that day. That's what gets me through this world, and it gets us through times just like we're living in. So you guys have a great day. Like like Jason said, man, just dig in to these things about our God our Savior, and the Holy Spirit more. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.